Hi there, my name is Nelly Mabaso. Welcome to our last lesson in this series on geometrical optics. Over the past few lessons, we have learned a lot about the properties of light. To start with, we have found out that light travels in straight lines. We showed that light can be reflected and refracted. We also started a debate about the nature of light. Is light more like a wave or a particle? Scientists have engaged in this debate for a long time. In 1690, Christian Huygens proposed that light be considered a wave since it travels in straight lines, undergoes reflection and refraction, which are all properties of waves. In 1704, Sir Isaac Newton proposed that light be thought of as a particle, but scientists in the 19th century like Maxwell argued that the wave model was better. Finally, in 1905, Einstein showed that light does have a particle nature. Today, scientists accept that light has a dual wave particle nature. The experiments we have done tell us about the properties of light. We know that light travels in straight lines, undergoes reflection and refraction. We cannot yet make up our minds based on this data about the nature of light. Both the wave and particle model can explain these properties. In grade 11 and 12, you will examine more experimental data and find out about the duality of light. But what we now need to consider is how we use some of the properties of light in our everyday lives. In this lesson, we are going to look at how we make use of the total internal reflection of light. By the end of this lesson, you will need to evaluate how fiber optic technology has changed society. Let's now begin our look at how we can use the total internal reflection of light practically. A periscope is an instrument used on submarines. It is used so that the people in the submarine can see what is happening on the surface of the water when it is submerged in the water. Let's go to the lab and see how periscopes actually work. Hi there, I have a triangular glass prism here. I've set up the ray box already. After I dim the lights, I'm going to let a ray hit the one side of the triangular glass prism. As the light hits the first side, the angle of incidence is zero. Then the light slows down, but does not change direction. Now the light ray then hits the other side of the prism and the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle. So total internal reflection occurs over here. The light then moves to the third side, but again, the angle of incidence is zero, so it moves straight through. And the same thing happens with the light in the second prism. Notice the incident rays at the first prism are parallel to the imagined ray from the second prism. As a result, it's possible to move the light from one place to another and make it easier to see. Let's go back to studio now and draw a ray diagram showing what we've just learned. Thanks, Aaron. Have a look at my ray diagram here. Let's use a boat as the object. Light travels from the boat into the front of the periscope. The light is refracted but does not change direction at this boundary. When the light strikes the back of the prism, it is reflected and moves down the tube of the periscope. At the bottom of the periscope, the light is reflected again and the observer sees an image of the boat that is the right way up directly in front of the eye. Now you've seen how light can be reflected inside a prism and you've seen how a periscope operates using two prisms. Now let's see if you can draw a ray diagram to explain how a pair of binoculars works. We are only going to consider one side. I will start you off. Here is the start of the ray diagram showing how the prisms should be placed. You can see that binoculars work on the same idea as periscopes, but the prisms are arranged differently. Let's see if your diagram looks like this. First, we have the light from the object we are looking at. This passes through the first side of the prism without bending. As it hits the second side, it is reflected 
towards the third side. At the third side, it is reflected again and now passes through the first prism into the second one. The light passes through the first side of the prism without bending. It is then reflected by the second side. The light then passes through the prism again until it reaches our eye. Binoculars have lenses before the first prism. The function of the lens is to magnify the image of the object. This is the reason why the object always looks bigger in binoculars. There's an even more exciting application of total internal reflection. We use this property of light in fiber optics. Fiber optics are thin tubes of glass. They are only a few tenths of a millimeter in diameter and they are used to carry pulses of light. The glass fiber is covered in a plastic sleeve. The plastic sleeve has a lower optical density than the glass. When a light ray is sent down the inner glass fiber, it will either reflect off the outer surface of the glass or refract back into the glass when it tries to leave the plastic sleeve. The great thing about fiber optics is that these cables can be bent, put around corners and even buried deep in the ground as cables and still light will travel down them. We went to the lab and did a simple experiment to see how fiber optics work. We used a large closable box, tin foil, a funnel, a beaker full of water and a strong torch. First we made a hole near the bottom of the box. Then we lined the box with the tin foil. We made the foil as smooth as possible and made sure that it is completely attached to the boxes inside. We also lined the lid of the box. Then we made two holes in the lid. The first hole had to be in the middle for the torch to fit exactly in this hole. The second hole was on the edge of the lid and was just big enough for the funnel to fit through. We put the torch and the funnel into the lid and closed the lid of the box. It is important that no light can escape from the box except from the bottom hole. Okay, we were ready to make it dark so that we could see the effect better. Watch what happened when we put water into the container. We switched on the torch and opened the bottom hole. We could clearly see how the light came out of the box in the water stream. The light from the torch left the box bending with the water. This is basically how fiber optics bend light inside the cable. Fiber optics has many uses. They can be used instead of copper wires to send electrical signals. The electrical pulses are converted to light pulses at one end. The light pulses are then sent down the fiber optic strand. On the other end of the strand, the light pulses are then changed back into an electrical signal. Because fiber optics are so thin, it is possible to have many together and therefore send many signals together at the same time. An advantage of fiber optics is that light is less likely to be affected by any kind of distortion. Other advantages of fiber optics are that they are so thin, when put together as cables, these cables are thin and very lightweight, especially when compared to copper cables. It is also difficult to tap into the fiber optics, which means they are safer for banks and security companies to use when transmitting information. Even though fiber optic cables are much more expensive than copper cables, they can carry a lot more information over much longer distances, which makes them more economical in the long run. Fiber optics are used in telecommunications. One thin fiber can carry thousands of telephone conversations at the same time. They are also great for high-speed internet connections. Fiber optics also have a very important medical use. They are used in instruments called endoscopes. Endo means inside and scope means to see. So, in simple terms, Endoscopes are used to look inside the human body without causing a lot of damage to the body. Endoscopes are used in the medical community for diagnosis and treatment of all sorts of different medical conditions, from sinus problems to stomach problems. 
A basic endoscope is made up of bundles of fiber optic strands which are bound together in pipes. There are two sections to the bundles. The first is the bundle that is used for the light source. The second bundle is attached to an eyepiece which the doctors use to see what has been illuminated by the bundle which is the light source. This is just one type of endoscope. There are many different types which are used for different purposes, but they all work on the same principles. When a person is experiencing trouble with their stomach, it would help the doctor if they could see inside their stomach. Endoscopes can be used to do just this. The patient would be given a sedative and then they will swallow a small camera at the end of an endoscope. At this time, it is now possible for the doctor to see on a screen what is happening. If necessary, the doctor would also be able to take a small sample of whatever is in the stomach, which then could be tested. This way, it is much easier for doctors to make a correct diagnosis. In the past, doctors would take much longer to make a correct diagnosis. This means that it would also cost a lot more for the patient who would need to pay for all the extra tests that would need to be done. There are many examples of how endoscopes have made medical procedures much easier. Let's recap some of the advantages of endoscopes. It is easier to make medical diagnosis. It is much easier to see inside the body and it leaves only very small scars. So now we have seen that total internal reflection of light certainly does affect our lives in many ways. So, here's your task for today. Write a report in which you show how fiber optic technology has changed society. This ends our study of light for now. Goodbye.